everybody, Sarah here at the Big Blast Homestead uh, in the middle of making dinner. Got some chickens in the oven, but I need to go ahead and put together my sides. And one of them I'm doing today is a heirloom tomato tart. A lot of people think tarts are sweet. This is not sweet. I'm just using Neufchatel or cream cheese. This one isn't sweet like cream cheese, but soft cheese, tomatoes, basil, and garlic on a puff pastry. And it is absolutely fabulous. Now, I went low carb this year and I went gluten free, about 80% of it. So now I'm gonna cheat and I'm gonna eat a piece of this tart because you cannot beat this yummy, yummy tart. It is the best thing ever. So we're gonna get the cheese started first because you want it to set so the flavors can kind of work in a little bit. And then I've already sliced my tomatoes, so I'll show you those. And then we're gonna work on the pastry and get that all in the oven. It is the easiest, best, quickest recipe ever. And it is so delicious. Like I cannot tell you how good this is unless you try it, but it is absolutely delicious. Okay, I'm starting with two blocks of cream cheese. And you can use three blocks or three logs of goat cheese if you prefer. It kind of just depends on what your flavor is. Um, or a large carton of ricotta cheese. And I'm doing a little bit more than half of a tablespoon of garlic. I'm putting in about a handful of minced basil. And I use fresh. If you're using dry, just put in like a tablespoon's worth. And then I'm just going to salt and pepper to taste. We like a lot of black pepper in our house. But salt and pepper to taste. And I'm just going to mix this up until it's well blended. Okay, you can add any other flavors that you want to this. Um, I like just the basil and garlic. And then with the tomato, it's, you know, your typical Italian marinara type flavors. But I'm gonna add two eggs. Got it all well blended, so I'm gonna scrape all my sides down and just make sure that all that gets incorporated into the middle as well. And what the egg does is it actually like kind of fluffs the cheese and binds it so it's not just a gooey mess. And then with the tomatoes being on top with the water that they have, it kind of helps it to not become wet, if that makes sense. So you just add the egg in for that. Now this is gonna go in the refrigerator and I'm gonna leave it set for about 20 minutes and that'll give me time for my pastries to finish thawing out. Um, it takes 40 minutes for puff pastry to thaw out. So give yourself some time and then hopefully when my chickens are done, I can get these tarts put together and we can enjoy this beautiful medley. Oh, look at the tomatoes. Tell me that's not beautiful. These are ripe, even though they're green. It's a Cherokee green tomato, but look at that. Green and then yellow with red and then red with yellow and then yellow and then purple. That's gonna be beautiful. So I'm excited to put these all on my tart today. So I apologize, it's gonna be loud in the background. I have dinner going, but I've got my puff pastry completely thawed out. Um, it will have some seam issues, but we can fix it as we go. They just never come out perfect. And I'm laying it out on a floured surface I've already rolled one just to get it done, but you're going to just press and roll it out and double it in size. Okay, I've basically gotten it where it needs to be and I have this little rip. So I'm gonna fold that over and press those seams together so that that rip's not there. And I'm just gonna move it over to a parchment paper lined tray. Um, any type of baking dish would work as long as it's large enough to hold this amount of pastry. And I just wanna come through with a knife and score the edge. Don't cut through it, just score it. You're basically making a mark to create a crust. And then you want to poke a couple holes so it does not puff up on you. And now that we've got that done, I'm going to pour a little olive oil on it. I'm 
I'm going to trim the extra paper so that it doesn't get in the way. And I'm going to put my cheese mixture on it and spread it through. All right, it may move on you, so just hold your edges and just gently spread the best that you can and get it all nice and covered. And now that that's where it is, we're going to go ahead and add some tomatoes. And you can do them whatever order you want, however you want. And now that the tomatoes are on, you want to salt the tomatoes. And this is really good because you can add whatever you want. You can add caramelized onions, you can add black olives, you know, just whatever, even minced garlic. Okay, after we've salted the tomatoes, I like to come through with a little feta cheese. That's completely optional. It just gives it a little bit of saltiness and bubbliness and you know browns up a little bit and it's really good. Sprinkle a little feta on there and you can add more fresh herbs if you want. Now this is going to go in the oven at 400 degrees for 30 minutes until all the edges are browned and bubbled up. Um, you'll definitely be able to tell when it's done. It will look like a cooked pastry. So I'll bring you back when it's finished and show you the finished product. All right, so there it is, completely finished. You can see how the edges have browned up and bubbled. All my cheese is melted. My tomatoes are cooked down a little bit. And it is very nice and firm. Um, it's almost like a pizza, the way that you would think about with the crust. And so I'm going to let this cool for a few minutes, and then I'll move it off the pan and just cut it into squares whatever size you choose, and serve it up as a side or a snack or whatever, you know, you want to eat it as. You can change up your flavors, you can change up your cheeses, but look how beautiful all those tomatoes are. And that's what I'm excited about. There it is, fresh out the oven. Absolutely beautiful. So we're going to enjoy this with dinner tonight. Just let it cool a little bit so you don't burn your mouth. And enjoy. Thank you guys for stopping by, and I will see you the next one. Bye.